I'm delighted to say we have Adrian Mullen of DCU Docus Aaron and Kilkenny uh, looking ahead to the upcoming matches and rivalries across the Electric Ireland GA Higher Education Championships. Through its hashtag First Class Rivals campaign, Electric Ireland will continue to celebrate the unexpected alliances that form between county rivals as they come together in pursuit of some of the most coveted titles across Camogie and GA. Adrian, how are things with you? Well, lads, how are you? Not too bad. We're just wondering, as I read through that, what sort of unexpected alliances and teammates from rival counties do you have in DCU? Um, I suppose you'd have people from a lot of different counties, I suppose, you know, Wexford, uh, Dublin, Westmead, um, just different counties like that, I suppose, that you'd never really uh, expect yourself to be playing with those lads because you're usually playing against them. Like So, um, yeah, no, it is, uh, it's different we we oh, won't yeah. name. <laughs> I can't, can't name names now, but uh, yeah, no, it is nice to hear of them. Like, so. And do you do you live in Dublin during the week or, or do you drive up from Kilkenny when you're going to college? Yeah, no, I live up here. Um, I'm living in, in uh, Finglas here at the moment. So um, yeah, no, it is handy. And uh, would you live with any of the players, uh, any of the other lads that you play with? Um, I'm living with two lads at the moment. So one is from Kilkenny, Jim Ryan. Um, he plays with the Roar and the Sieg. And uh, the other lad is James Keyes uh, from Leash. So um, he would he's not playing Fitzgibbon this year, but he would have played there uh, last year. And yeah, he's pacey forward, isn't he? Uh, he's good in fairness to him. Yeah, yeah. No, he's handy. Yeah. yeah. Michael, do you want to jump in? Just a quick one, Adrian. Uh, I've been at a couple of your games the last couple of years uh, in the Fitzgibbon Cup. Um, and I know it's probably something that has annoyed you that you haven't maybe. I don't think you were beaten in, did, uh, was it a semi-final that Mark Coleman put over that line ball to beat you a couple of years ago? Like yeah, something it, like winning a Fitzgibbon is something I know that, I, I know even from looking at you in the build-up to games, there's a, it seems to be a great camaraderie amongst the squad and it's something that you'd love to do, I'd imagine. Yeah, look, um, it's it's a great atmosphere up here. Like, um, It's great to be involved with the team, um, but... Look, I, I don't think DC has ever won a Fitzgibbon title, like so. Um, like obviously, we we'd love to do it, and if we got the chance to to bring a Fitzgibbon title back here, um, you know, it'd be it'd be an unbelievable achievement, and it's something we we really want to do up here. Was were you part of a an All Ireland winner Freshers team? DCU won a Freshers a couple of years ago, didn't they? Yeah, they won it. No, I I wasn't part of that one. No, I was the year after. Oh, okay, okay, and obviously, yeah, winning if it's given is it would, would be unreal, especially. Uh, don't think UCD have won one in a good while either, so it would be a fair one, it'd be a left field one for where you where DCU to go and win one. So I'm sure you'll be doing everything possible. You have a difficult, difficult juggling act on your hands at the moment as well, though, between county. Well, you're obviously not involved with the county at the moment, but club, and then presume once the club finishes, you'll want to hopefully enjoy yourself for a couple of days, but you want to get back, you have to get back at it fairly quick after, too, I'd say. Yeah, exactly. We're playing the Club All Ireland on the twenty second and um our first Fitzgibbon uh match is against Mary I on Mary I on the twenty fifth of January. So it's a quick enough turnaround and uh, you know, uh, so I'll have to have the body right for that as well. So uh we'll see how it goes. It's funny, I remember seeing Kevin Moore play for uh De La Salle. I think it was a Club All Ireland final and I think he was the best player on the field. And he'd play Fitzgibbon about four days later, and you could just, yeah. you know, it's just, it's so difficult because De La Salle were beaten, I think, in that final, and it's so difficult the highs and lows of it. And even not being smart, if you win the club All Ireland, you're going to want to enjoy yourself as well. Like, so it's a kind of a difficult balancing act. Yeah, but it's, it's obviously great to be involved in as well, and it's probably a, a good complaint to have, you know, uh, facing into a, a game three days later. Like, so, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes and take it as it comes. Did, um, what, what's the club season been like for you? Because obviously after what happened last year against Bally Gunner, you had a huge hunger to get back. And a couple of the games, maybe the likes of Nace kind of springs to mind, and obviously Kilmacud as well. You probably played great stuff for one half, but then not so great for the other half before that performance against Bally Gunner, which was really excellent. But what, what's it been like for you? Um, yeah, no, it's, since we came back from the county, you know, we've, uh, we have... I suppose new management in this year as well, like who have been uh, very good so far. Like so, um, you know they really bring kind of a freshness to it as well. So um, yeah, we're just I suppose we talk an awful lot uh, between ourselves about uh, not putting two good halves together, like um, because as you said, we put one good half uh, in against Nace and against Kilmacud. Obviously, the first half was uh, was good, and then the second half uh, we probably fell fell apart, like so. 
Um, yeah, going into Valley Gunner then, there was just a huge emphasis of uh, putting two good halves together. Like, um, uh, So I think we did that and we got over the line. So um, now we just have to prepare as best we can for Dunlai and uh, try to, yeah, just ha- we, we're going to need to bring a, a very good game against them. Like, So um, the main thing is putting two good halves together. And how satisfying was it to get that win over Bally Gunner after what had happened back in February? Uh, well, I suppose the most satisfying part about it was that we're back in the All-Ireland final. Like, so uh, we, we, at least we have a chance now to, uh, obviously we lost last year, so we have a chance now to, I suppose, uh, maybe ho- hopefully win this year. But um, yeah, you know, it was obviously good, good to get one over on, on Bally Gunner as well, because um, you know, obviously they were in the All-Ireland, so you obviously want to beat uh, the All-Ireland champions and you know play against the best and you know, try to beat the best, like, so, um, yeah, no, it was a good one. Yeah, did did you see Don Loy's match against uh, St. Thomas? I'm sure you did, and that great goal from Keelan Malloy. Yeah, I watched the back, of course, um, it was an unbelievable goal, um, I think he he picked it up, uh, it was on the 65 or mm-hmm. around there, and, you know, just cut, cut through the whole defence, like, and um, I suppose that's that's the threat they have in the inside forward line, Joe, they're, they're, they're really fast uh, and good, good, skillful players, like, so, um, you give them the space, and they, they will hurt you. Like so. Mm. How, do you think you've um, changed much as a player in the last few years? Obviously, I think you made your inter county debut in twenty nineteen, and just see you floating around different parts of the pitch now. And I'm wondering, like, have you kind of changed your role, or how has it evolved? Um, no, I don't think I've changed too much. To be honest, um, the first year I was with Kilkenny, I was corner forward, but I suppose I was more of a Roman corner forward than an actual. You know, like staying in in the corner, like you know. So um, I suppose I probably do that a bit uh, further out the field now. Uh, but look, obviously, um, I'm there to uh, work hard as well. Like so, right? Like, there's only so much room, and you can you can do. And picking up loose ball, you still have to get stuck into the tackles and get the turnovers, um, which are really vital um, for the team. Like mm, Michael. Uh, has it been a conscious thing in the last couple of years, Adrian, or when it, was it when you were out with your crew, maybe about even building yourself up even more, gone very robust into the tackle? You're probably able to take yeah. and give tackles maybe a lot more than you would have been a couple of years ago. Is that just a natural filling out thing, or did you make a conscious effort, I suppose, to get maybe even a bit bulkier and a bit more robust? No, I just think it's natural development, really. Um, Joe is probably younger back then, and it's pre- it's natural to find a bit of size over, over the years. Um as well, like um, obviously, I was out with the crew sheet there a couple of years ago, and uh, I was working uh, extremely hard, and I was working very close with our uh, strength and conditioning coach Mickey Comfort, um, as well as who who's obviously excellent at his job as well. So, um, yeah, I've probably packed on a bit of size, all right, um, but um, yeah, no, that's thanks to him, and you know, he's he put in a huge effort. I'd say there's a fair few steaks and a fair bit of protein gone into it as well. It's not, it's not, a, it's not all natural and a fair bit of hard work to it too. Um, can I just ask you about the about uh, about Pat Hoban and the new team coming in? It's a mad one to say that you're, you know, on the five year journey. Henry was there for two years, and then James O'Connor was there for two years, and now the lads have come in and it's all been able to continue on. Is that a case of them not changing too much from what was going on before, or just talk to me about that because? There's a lot of clubs where that wouldn't happen. The success wouldn't continue when a new management comes in. Um, to be honest, I think there has been changes um, throughout the, the three different managements. Um, and I, I think those changes bring kind of a freshness to the team. Like, you know, you're not you're not going stale and in, in doing the same thing the whole time because, you no, know, they're trying to bring their own ideas to it. Like, and um, yeah, I suppose that just makes you work even a bit harder on the training field uh, to try and execute the game plan or, or the tactics that they that they provide. Um oh, the three boys have been unbelievable this year, uh, Pat, Jimmy Marr and um Niall Lacey. So um yeah, I can't speak highly enough of them, uh, but obviously we still have one more game to get over and uh you know we have full focus on that like so we'll just prepare as best we can. Adrian, who would be I, I asked this to Owen Cody not, not so long ago. I want to get your thoughts on it. Who'd be the biggest sneer in the Bally Hale dressing room? <laughs> Biggest sneer. Uh, well, when you catch when you catch Joey Holden and Colin Fenley together, there's no getting away from. Uh, <laughs> you, you can't even go back at them because they're just too good at like they're, when they gang up on you, <laughs> you're at them. Like so, <laughs> them them together, they're a good duo. Um, so yeah, and they're always they always kind of seem to be uh, together. 
uh, ganging up on on Nelson. So, uh, <laughs> he did you know, say Joey Holden actually. He definitely yeah, did say. Yeah, it wouldn't, it's not the lad you would have expected. Now he's a bit like a pure kind of dark horse. There. I thought Joey would have been quiet enough, but it's those kind of quiet, sly comments that maybe hurt the most, probably. Yeah, he wouldn't be saying much, but uh, you know his little one-liners and and stuff like that. Like there's no come come back from like so. Uh, yeah, no, he's good at it now. He, uh, he he's a sneery man. Have you tried to tempt Colin back into Kilkenny? Have you said that to him? Um. Ah, sure. Look, we we obviously love him, love him to be back in. Like, but you know, Colin's his own man, and he makes his own decisions. Like, so uh, he wouldn't get too 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 into it with him. Like, uh, but no, I, th- I think he he probably knows we love to have him in there. But look, it's just the, it's just the way it's working out. Have you have you met a more him. physical Sorry, player? Right? Sorry, I just want to ask yeah. about Colin as well. Have you met a more physically imposing player than Colin? Like, he just seems like a bull. Uh, yeah, his brother Mick, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, no, Jay's uh, Colin's unreal to have in on the edge of square, like you know. Um, it doesn't really matter what ball you give into him, uh, nearly turns into a wrestling match in there with him in the full back, like so. Um, no, he's deadly, he's, he's so direct, um, when he gets the ball, like so. Hopefully, he can just bring that to, to the game next week. They're your cousins as well, Adrian, are they? Uh, first cousins, yeah. Yeah. First cousins, yeah, which is a good, uh, good breeding there. Uh, just a, a quick question from one of our viewers, uh, P Well seventy four. He says, "Could you just ask Adrian how he finds the split season as he's at the extreme edge of it and he has no break?" You're obviously, I'd say, your opinion and TJ's opinion might be different, just even age wise. But how do you find it? You probably you haven't really had much of a break. Is it tough on the body? You're going to be going straight into. Yeah, you just kind of said you're going to be going straight into Fitzgibbon and in with Kilkenny as well fairly quickly after. So it's fairly full on. Um, yeah, no, to be honest, I my own my own personal opinion, I, I actually do I'm in favour of it. Like I, I loved it this year. Um, you know, you get to give it give your all to the county and then you come back and give it all to to the club, like so um no, it's definitely worked good for I think most inter county players actually uh did have positive things to say about it, like but um um, I'm not too sure about the club players, what, what they think of it, but just from my own personal opinion, um, I, I enjoyed it this year. Mm. Yeah, and uh, I suppose then the other thing is, do you, like having that extended period of time with the club, does it allow you to let your hair down a little bit more and enjoy yourself? Because it's not like, like pretty much after every match, if you want to, you can go out and enjoy yourself unless you have a game next week. Yeah, I suppose you can put the hair down a small bit, like um, draw, especially during the league, I suppose you can... Uh, after nearly every game, you get to have a few pints with the with your teammates. Like so, I think it's easier that way. Um, but obviously, when you're in train, you train really hard. Like, um, and I suppose you probably earn your few pints in in the train. Like so, um, yeah, no. And then probably haven't got too much of a break because we've gone um, the full way this year to, into the All Ireland. So, um, yeah, no, it is it is it is good. It's been good so hard. How important do you find that social element of it, Adrian, to be able to, particularly at club level, it's a bit more difficult at county uh, time-wise and how condensed things are, but to actually be able to go out and enjoy yourself with the boys after the game, I'd always find, I actually don't drink myself, but I'd always encourage it because I think lads being out like that together, like it's the first thing you're probably going to talk about the Tuesday night when you go back in training is something someone did or the crack that was had. It's an important part that I think helps bind clubs and not being smart, you have as strong of a bind within your club as any club in the country. Yeah, exactly. I think club level, I, I, I actually do think it's important. Um, it really adds to, I suppose, the atmosphere around training and the club. And, you know, obviously, uh, when you go out for your few points or whatever, um, it's just a way of getting the younger lads and the older lads to mix. And I think um, around our setup, I think we do that very well. Um, you can see like the oldest player on our team talk to the youngest player like and it doesn't really matter like so um i think uh that's just from from those uh having those few points i think that's that's the good thing about it. what sort of shape is is darren in for the final adrian i know he's been fairly plagued with injuries the last couple of years and he obviously went off went off early the last days was he going to be in the running for for the dunlai game yeah no Dar- darren seems to be coming on uh very well um so yeah, against Bally Gunner, he came off in the first couple of minutes, like so, with uh, I think a calf problem. But uh, no, he's had a few few weeks uh, to get himself right, and um, though there's no better man to, I suppose, do his do his rehab as well, like so. Um, no, he'll be he'll be good. 
just on that as well, you've had, uh, like the last day against Bally Gunner, you had two like, pretty serious injuries and two big substitutions early in the game. That must have made it even more satisfying to, to do what you did because I suppose there was, you know, people were kind of maybe writing you off in some quarters beforehand and then you throw in the two big injuries to it as well. Yeah, de- definitely because um, I think coming into the game, I, I, people are probably uh, edging Bally Gunner because... Uh, they're probably saying they have more strength and depth in their panel, like so. Um, it was extremely satisfying to obviously it wasn't nice to see those lads go off, but for other lads to come in and, and do a job, um, it was extremely satisfying. Hmm. Okay, well, look, Adrian, been brilliant to have you on the show, and best of luck in the All Ireland final and in the in the Fitzgibbon Cup as well. Yeah, lovely, thanks, lads. Cheers, Adrian, good man.